So very interesting project that I brought to share with you guys today. This has actually been a project um, now three years in the making. Um, as you can see, it's going to be a total systems approach, and, and, and we're looking at it from the perspective that the, the mine design is changing. It's going to change. It, we already know that the pillars are going to increase, so travel distances, um, relocation distances, they're all going to get longer. So what we've been tasked to do is find that solution, replace this inefficient um, mining system that we currently have with something that's going to work. So that's what we're going to discuss today. Um, the purpose, is, of course, is to bring them a total system approach. And we're going to increase the productivity and also safety. I'm going to show you a, a, a general geologic overview just so you can understand some of the conditions that we are having to deal with at, at the mine. Um, we're going to do some documentation of the current underground production, um, the issues and delays of the current system, and, and that was done via time study there in, in, in South Africa. So we'll look at phase one where we're going to look at a, a BH-20 lithium-ion battery hauler. Phase two is a crawler bunker machine with the BH-20 haulage. Phase three, we're going to put a wide head, 6.6 meter wide uh, machine, miner. We're going to add a crawler bunker bolter machine and the BH-20 haulage. And then I'm going to run through a summary. So if you look at um, the current mining system, You've got a 12 meter maximum cut, which it, in, if you bring to mind some of the US operation, that's like a 40 foot cut, okay? So we know that the conditions aren't terrible, but they're still bad. You know, we're in a double pass situation. So a place change miner, you know, you've got a cutter head width of about 3.65, 3.7 meters. You're gonna have to take two cuts, you know, to finish out the 12 meter cut. You've got a place change situation with the bolter. Um, you've got an inefficient shuttle car system, and the reason why I say that is that, you know, you've got tethered haulage, um, they're underutilized, they're only a 12 and a half tonny capacity, so uh, kind of under, under capacity for the type of machine that they use there. So we've got some excessive haulage delays. And, and I'm looking at an unbalanced cut and load cycle for that machine loading that smaller haulage, you know, you know the, from the, the sump that they're doing, it's gonna take two cars to load it out completely. So what that does is it slows that advance rate. And we've got a lot of bolting delays. And so our, our new proposed system is we're gonna extend those cut distances. So we're gonna cut longer. We're gonna do it in a single pass. And at the final stage in phase three, we're gonna add that crawler bunker bolter machine who's gonna be installing bolts while this guy is cutting in advance. The BH-20 haulage system is extremely efficient. It's a simplified way to run the haulers untethered in a racetrack routing, and I'll show you a, um, a, a short animation of what that looks like. And we're gonna increase the load capacity in the haulers. Um, balancing the cycle, so we're gonna cut one sump and shear, it's gonna fill that one car. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio there. And then we're gonna minimize those bolting delays per two meter advance of the machine. So the safety of miners, it's predictable, it's consistent. You've got cutting, bolting, haulage cycles. Everything is defined and simplified. Um, minimal equipment moves, um, the reduction of bolt installations per operator, um, and then you go on to the minimum unbolted stand-up time. So now instead of cutting the 12 meters, moving the machine out, waiting for the bolter to come in, you're bolting your primary installations on advance, which is a significant safety improvement for the miners. Um, and we're gonna do some simplified effective face ventilation, and that's also to improve the safety of the miners at the face. The geologic overview of South Africa, um, challenging ground conditions. Um, you've got dike seals, um, a mul multiple jointing, sidewall spiling. You've got you know, faulting. Anything that you can possibly imagine is probably gonna wind up, you're gonna see it. You've got varying seam geology, and in, in, in the highlight, in the dolerite, you'll see that that's actually an igneous um, intrusion that just sometimes appears um, that they've got to deal with. So you do have some units that do have stone work, stoneworks to take care of that ig igneous, um, uncuttable material. Um, your major concerns are with the st pillar stability and the sidewall spalling. So they've got the, the, the sidewalls coming in, popping. And then you've got some hard cutting conditions. So that they're known to have hard coals in South Africa, and they also have an inseam rock, which is that siltstone shell mudstone, and it can be up to 1.6 meters in thickness. Um, and so on, on, the, um, on the left of the slide, the overburden, that's your general param parameters of what we look at in the development. 
and then there's a translation to the underground working. So I've already mentioned the larger pillars. Um, you've got some various seam heights and, and multiple operations there. You've got the igneous intrusives, and then you've got the sidewall instabilities that we've got to deal with. So the current mining and bolting system, as you can see in the drawing, you know, you've got this layout, and then every one of the cuts have been numbered to show you just where the miner cuts and then where the miner goes next. So the number, numeration kind of shows you the movements of the mining and the bolting throughout the sequence. And then I want to highlight that, um, that the current production currently for these units is about 539,000 uh, tonny per annum. That's about where they're sitting on average. And then to pay attention to within the schedule, there's a lot of information there, but it, it's kind of interesting to see when you get down to the production time per shift, you've got 202 minutes left after all your scheduled delays. So you're looking at 202 minutes, but out of that, the production delays currently are 112, 113 minutes of those 202. So we're only having like 90 minutes of cutting time per shift available. And then um, the bolt installation timings are provided to you to show you that when we do these types of analysis, that is something that we also will always do. We want to know what our miners are doing, what the haulers are doing, and then what the bolters are doing. So that just gives you an indication of how long they spend bolting per 12 meters of cutting. So he here's an overall high level summary of the modeling from phase one, where we, we use the same place change miner and we put the BH-20 in place of the shuttle car. And so as you can see, we've got the, the summary on the top, which is the HM-37B in shuttle car. So that would be what we're looking to, to validate. So when I do these, I want this model to be very close to what they're actually doing. And we came in very close. So we had confidence that the model could be then utilized to bring in the new stuff. Okay, take out the shuttle car, put in the BH-20. And simply by replacing the BH-20s, if you can look at the cutting time per shift, the, 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 the current state is like 79 minutes, 80 minutes. We're, we've already increased the cutting time to 95 minutes. That's, that's extraordinary in terms of productivity. And then if you look at the lost time between loads for the shuttle car, you're looking at like 80 minutes a shift that you're losing because you're waiting for that shuttle car. Now you're going to reduce that to 39 minutes. So that's the improvement that we see from the BH-20s, utilizing three BH-20s in place of three shuttle cars. And then I wanted to show you really quick, um, you, you've heard a lot about the battery technology, um, but this is what's so cool though about the, the, when you run these guys, they each have a dedicated route and they follow like a racetrack. So if you envision that loop or that circle, so your loaded hauler always knows he's going to be traveling one route and there's going to be nobody there. When he goes to discharge, he's going to go in a totally different lane and he's going to be there and that's his. So when you keep them in this loop type haulage, there's no congestion, there's no bottlenecks in that whole routing system. So it, it makes it a lot easier to, to utilize and then you eliminate all the tethering and all the pains you have with cable handling from a three shuttle car system. So I just wanted to show you the, the advantage of utilizing these battery haulers underground. Now phase two, we're going to bring in a crawler bunker car. Now the difference with this crawler bunker is the fact that we're not going to put bolts in. So we're going to put him behind this place change machine. We're going to use him to capture the coal that's cut from this machine and that's all he's going to do. He's going to bunker that material and he's going to eliminate some of that wait time for, that, for the hauler. We're going to try to eliminate the wait time as much as possible by bunkering it. So we're not having to stop and wait. So as you can see that it, 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 did, it, did, sh it did show a, a significant reduction in the haulage times, um, and then you had the longer cutting times. We were able to extend the cuts from 12 meters to 25 meters, but in order to keep up with this system, you would need two, I'll say two twin boom bolters on the section. So instead of one twin boom bolter, now you're gonna have two that are going to have to follow this guy around because they're cutting so efficiently, a single bolter would not keep up with the amount of bolts that they have to install. So that becomes a problem. Um, just generally in the summer, you can see the difference. You know, the, the cutting time went up phenomenally from the 82 minutes. Now we're at 156 minutes. Um, we've also significantly reduced the shuttle car, the haulage wait time, 141 minutes down to 26. And significant bump in tonne per year. 143% increase compared to their current system. Now, 
Project uh, phase three is where it gets really, really cool because now we're gonna take a single pass machine. So you get rid of the place change machine. Now you've got this wide head, um, continuous miner that's gonna cut in a single pass. And then you're gonna put behind him not only a, a bunker car, but now we're gonna bolt. Now we're gonna install primary installations while this guy's cutting in advance. And the beauty of this is that you've got this miner's boom that you work with. So we've got two meters of play here so that we can keep that crawler bunker stationary, we can put the primary bolts, and this guy can cut ahead of us for two meters before he has to stop. So and in fact, it does kind of create like a continuous system. And then of course, we're gonna have the three BH-20s behind it. And just notice in the cut sequence too, how we, we kind of made it better in, in the previous in phase two, we got 25 meters. Now we're going to cuts to center distance, and we're just going straight across the entry. We're going seven entries across, we're gonna make one move, and we're gonna make one turn, and then drive all the cross cuts straight across. So it's very, very simplified and very, very efficient. 35 meter extended cuts for this example. And this is just some, some detail in, in how we looked at the, the feasibility of the crawler bunker. So critical to understand the installation timings. You know, So we run indicative timings models with the use of our Australian engineers. We come up with this idea of what we know we can do with our bolts, and we want to compare that to what we're doing with cutting. And then we want to see, is there some type of delay that we're going to encounter while we're mining? Because that's going to be that additional delay that we're going to, you know, we're going to have. So, you know, if you look at the pattern, we're just putting in the four 1.8 meter bolts. We're gonna have four drills on there. So we're gonna have two operators operating two drills, semi-autonomous um, installations. So we found that um, in, in our case, with the, with the bolting patterns, we only got about a minute delay per two meters of cutting. It's not, not bad. So you're gonna see now the summary for the, the phase three, the total mining system, the preliminary. Um, productivity estimate. Um, we, we had to change somewhat the, the way we think about this. So we couldn't revert back to their, their, their current because a lot of things change with this system. So as you can see, we, we've brought in some bolting time comparisons, the bolting delays. Um, we've got cable handling delay, but that's only for the miner. And then we looked at pick changing delays because with a wide head machine, it's gonna cut a little bit different than our place change. So we've incorporated that to kind of capture what's gonna happen in the system. And then we're gonna resupply our CBBM as well. So that's something that they currently didn't have to worry about. But overall, we're looking at cutting time of 161 minutes. We're looking at um, our average production rate going to 319 tonne per hour with our projected tonne per year at 1.6. Huge increase. And then for each two minute advance, you have zero haulage delay. You have about 1.1 minute of bolting delay. And then you have your other typical in-cycle delays as well. But it's 197% an increase in the productivity. And you can see as compared to the 539,000 where they sit now. So in summary, you know, we know that we're headed to the robust pillar. We know that we're gonna have some problems with the current system, so we've been asked to identify a solution. Um, the, the, the longer center distances, you know, are gonna cause the, the shuttle cars now a lot of problems just because of the tethering and the arrangement of the cables for that system. You know, there are often times to where you can't utilize all three shuttle cars. And then you've got an undersized capacity in their current shuttle car. So, you know, we, we kind of wanna see what can we, can we do to replace that to make this more of an efficient system. And so we've offered them this total system. Um, and, you know, with a single pass miner, that 12 hm 37 c with that crawler bunker bolter machine and with our lithium ion battery haulers, you know, we can show that in each incremental phase that we're gonna be able to increase productivity at each and every single one of those. Thank you. <laughs>